He gave himself an F. He stopped the guy. That's great. Yeah. He gave Jerome, yeah. he, well, he, you know, so let, let's just talk about the facts. The facts is that this was a very tough, durable guy who has not been stopped by Vladimir Klitschko. Stopped, I think, in the 12th round by Pavetkin on the cut. Not really stopped. So Jerome broke him down. He stopped him. Uh, the corner stopped the fight. I, th I believe that had the fight went on, it would have been a spectacular type of stoppage that people were looking for. And uh, Joe was very active, uh, throwing a lot of punches, breaking this guy down. And again, you know, another learning curve, another, another uh, big step uh, in the right direction. In the last two fights, Joe beat two best guys that he's fought ever fought. And Joe has less than 20 professional fights. So the fact that he has such a big personality and he's from Brooklyn, New York, uh, so there's a lot of expectations. And I think that Joe is living up to those expectations. But obviously, everybody always wants to see more. And uh, you know, a guy like Wok has never really been, um, you know, knocked out, knockout, dragout type of type of you know type of fight. And I think Jarrell was on his way, but the fight got stopped before he was getting ready to do that. Jarrell, did you know early on that this wasn't you feeling at your very best? Did you know in round one or going into the ring? Or? I think I knew since the last week of training camp. I told myself, I said. No matter what you're going through, your body feel, just make sure your conditioning was on point, you know, because, uh, like I said, camp was just rough on the body. Um, the elbow was just hurting, you know. It was, I was getting massages and therapy on it from, like, a month and a half ago, you know. So I told myself, the main thing is, listen, man, this is boxing. If I get through this, I get through anything, you know, because it's mental, you know. And I told myself, if the power wasn't there, the conditioning got to be there, you know. And I had fun. Even though I got hit with a couple shots, it didn't hurt me. The main thing was trying to stay in his chest. Uh, he tried to lay on me a couple of times. I, you know, he was taller than me, so I just made sure I just relaxed and had some fun. You know, like I said, I gave I gave my rating today an F because um, I wasn't my best performance and I was lighter. So even my last fight was heavier. I think I felt a lot stronger. I felt a lot better. I um, was able to push him back a lot more. But I took my time and, uh, like I said, um, yeah, I take a, 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 a sloppy win over a good loss any day. You know, and um, it's boxing, man. You know. I, I, like I said, Anthony Joshua fought who before he got a title shot? Who did Deontay fight before he got a title shot? I'm fighting two top 10 guys already, and I'm not even guaranteed a title shot yet. So I say, you know, I take it for what it is. I take it as a blessing that I'm taking a harder route, because when I get there, they're going to have to kill me to get it, get it away from me, you know? It's part of boxing, though. You know, it's a learning experience. Um, like I said, you know, Walk was a cool guy. You know, there was no, like, animosity. There was no really anger towards him. It was just business, you know? But Deontay and them dudes, I don't like him. So it's gonna be a lot different, you know? So it's fun, man. You know, and I do wanna say that even though he had a great performance, the fact that, that he has so much more potential and the expectations are so high because he has so much more potential is just a great, it's, it's great for Jarrell because he just did the best out of two guys, Vladimir Klitschko, one of the greatest heavyweights of all time, Povetkin, Olympic gold medalist, multi-time world champion, one of the best heavyweights in the world. You know, they stopped him in the 12th round. And, well, only Povetkin stopped him on a cut in the 12th round. <coughs> And Jarrell stopped him you know, in the four to tenth round. And I only sparred twice for this fight. This is the time I was sparred twice. It was hard to get sparring partners. And um, Adam Kornaki, yeah, yeah. Adam Kornaki was my only sparring partner I really had. And he left uh, last week to go train with Pavekin, you know. And, um, you know, like I said before, it's hard for me to get sparring partners. And that's why last night was so hard for me to fight Adam because that's one of my best friends since I started as an amateur. And he's one of the only sparring partners that actually show up, you know. And um, it was great, man. Like I said, I had fun. It was good to put on for my city. And I'm glad it wasn't the best performance because when you perform too good, guys don't want to fight. So I think, you know, it is what it is. Hopefully it was just the right amount of, you know, effort. So it's when these guys think I'm not working and they call me out. And that's why they're going to slip up because I know for a fact, I still throw more punches than them. You know what I mean? And I still move better than a lot of the other guys. Do you feel that this helped or hurt your cause for getting one of those fights? Um, I think it definitely helps, you know, because sometimes you can't look too great. You know, you gotta look just enough so one of these guys, oh, you know what, I can beat him. So if you look at all these heavyweight champions that have belts right now, none of them really got big cojones, if you look at it, because none of them really wanna fight for another guy for a title. If you watch how they, watch how the attitude is, it's more about the money for them. Joseph Paul gonna want money. You know, he's not really fighting, oh, I wanna fight Anthony Joshua, really wanna fight Deontay. Deontay's really chasing Anthony Joshua for the money. When he got the belt, he wasn't really trying to fight any top contenders. I'm telling you, give me any one of them, and I'll fight him. Sometimes I say, I've never, I've not turned down one fight yet. They told me, listen, we got WAP. I'm like, when? Okay, give it to me. Jerome Washington, I had three and a half, four weeks notice. I'm like, okay.
11 months old, give it to me. You know what I mean? So it's not, I haven't turned on a fight yet. And these guys are top 10. I don't know how some of them stood there, but they're top 10 guys they gave me. You know what I mean? So like I said, man, if anybody got the cojones, man, I, I definitely know it's me. It's, it's a very exciting time in the heavyweight division. There's lots of different flavors in the division. Here we have a guy from Brooklyn, New York, right here at home, who talks the talk and walks the walk. He truly, you know, uh, calls all the guys out and he finds the best available contenders. Bro, truly. It didn't seem like you had the fear factor this week from Marius Wang. Yeah. Someone like Andy Joshua, if you're on the world, would they you get up with that? Will you get the fear factor with that? Give us a better performance yourself. Yeah, most definitely. I think every opponent is going to give you a certain kind of energy and a certain kind of, uh, uh, you know, charisma. Or, or It's going to give you a certain kind of feel. Like I said, this fight was really about moving and trying to get, get the weight down and see move around this big guy. But like I said, Anthony Joshua, I'm, I'm going to be a totally different animal because I don't like none of them. You know what I mean? So it's going to be a totally different energy, a totally different big baby. Like I said, we try to bring the weight down to kind of please you guys, the media, to kind of show them I can bring the weight down. But like I said, everybody's different. You see what I'm trying to say? A lot of you guys, but you know, I prefer big baby at 290. So some guys already told me that. And I said, you know what it was? I did no weight training for this fight whatsoever. No push-ups. I did was crunches and cardio. You know, and I, and I felt like it kind of hindered myself because I should have stuck to my regular review, you know. But say it's boxing, it's a learning, a learning experience, it's a learning curve, and it's back to the drawing board. You mentioned Andrew Joshua. May I ask why you dislike Andrew Joshua? He got what I want. It's part of the game, that's all. I don't dislike him as a person. I know he's put on his front as a, as a, as a Calvin Klein model, but hey, I'm from the streets. I'm going to run him over. So what is your business more than possible? Yeah, but you know, part of boxing is all mental. You know, you gotta kind of create this image about a person in order to walk through them. You know, Wack was one of those guys that didn't even speak English, so it was hard for me to even talk junk about it. It didn't make sense. You know what I mean? So I kind of went the other route because that's who I really am too. I'm a nice, loving guy. But when the switch comes on and be a killer, I'm a killer. You know. So, but like I said, I know AJ been fighting a bunch of bums, and I just can't wait to watch him up. Big story, as we know, this week has been will it happen? Um, they've been asking me this a couple times. Let me think. Any damn body, because I'm a fighter. You know, some about I prefer AJ. Why is the more money? Is is he not as powerful as Deontay? Or why Deontay's powerful is not enough money? I'm a fighter, man. I'm a warrior. I go in there with any one of them. You know what I mean? So who would you pick to win out each of those? Um, if I take myself out of the equation, uh, from what I've seen lately, I think Deontay. And the reason why is it's a wild crazy man that there's a whole bunch of windmills and if one of them clip you get hurt and AJ doesn't really move his head, he's really stiff, doesn't really get low on shots, he's not a great counter puncher. He does get hit by guys who are smaller, shorter, and slower than Deontay. So I kind of give the edge to Deontay as of now. But um, like I said, you know, Deontay is more the natural looking guy, 220 athletic looking dude. And AJ look like a small bodybuilder, <laughs> a strength bodybuilder. And muscles don't help your chin. So, you know, he's been dropped and hurt in sparring and fights. Deontay has been hurt a couple of times in sparring, but not in fights as we can't really see, you know. <laughs> so, uh, congratulations on your win tonight. Um, Kudos, thank you. <laughs> uh, on paper, very, very good performance. I mean, yeah. relative to walks, uh, opponents in practice. An ugly fight, I think you've acknowledged that yeah. as well. Um, coming in, did you expect it to play out differently than it did? Did you think it was um, a spectacular I, I, knockout? Yeah, I think, no, I, I know it's going to be spectacular. He's a tough dude. I think my main thing was I was going to beat him with a lot of shots. My main thing was I was going to land so many shots on him that he was going to forfeit and the referee's going to see something in it. But for some reason, I didn't have that pop that I really wanted to, and my trainer said, just touch him, just keep touching him, touching him, touching him, hit him in joints, hit him on something, just keep touching him, and eventually yourself to fall. And there was rounds where I was like, why just can't let go of the shot, you know? And I was really because I didn't really want to tweak the elbow any more than what it was. I just touched him, had some fun, and mentally I was having fun, you know? Sometimes I thought about the elbow kind of took me out of my game plan, but the main thing is getting the win, you know? Like I said, it's part of boxing. You're gonna have good days, you're gonna have bad days, but I'm still fighting top 10 contenders, and I ain't got a, I am not even a title shot yet, so. It's boxing, man. man. Learn experience, man. Learn experience. So, uh, yeah, next question. So, uh, Eddie Hearn has repeatedly said that uh, Dillian White has a date, uh, mm. February 3rd, O2 Arena. He's mm. trying to push uh, Wilder for that fight. Mm. Uh, what would you say if Eddie so, Hearn offered you? I'd take it like this. I put it, I'm going to take myself out of it and put an emotional point for these for you guys and take myself out of the equation. Give it an unbiased look. The two, the biggest fight right now at this point is Deontay and AJ. We all know that. Respectfully, okay, cool. They should fight. Okay, fine. Um, the next fight on the table for me 
that's that makes any sense would be a thin and white. If Joseph Parker wants to make his TV, Joseph Parker. Um, I, I mean, those two fights for me realistically that make sense for me at this point because who are they really fighting? You know, Joseph Parker for the Huey Fury, who I know didn't deserve a title shot, but you know his promoter knows who's who and got him a title shot. Um, you know, Dylan White is not a mandatory. I think Dylan White should come see me. I think that'd be a great fight. And then the winner of that get AJ Deontay. I think that's I think that's actually fair. Even though I already fought top ten because these guys ain't fighting nobody. You know what I mean? But I said I would I would like that fight to happen. Get it out the way, okay? And I get the winner of that, or I take Joseph Parker. But ain't nobody gonna call me out right now, man. It is what it is. I know Joseph Parker. He a punk. You know, he just came in super sloppy against Huey Fury. I don't know what the hell he was doing in that fight. He should have stopped him. Like, it is what it is. <laughs> Thanks, man. Dimitri, you're gonna um right here, Dimitri. Right here, right here. Yes, yes, yes. Um, 